How do you do that? Boy, I haven't watched Loud. What is that? Yeah, man. Welcome to Law and Order the Cosmo. This is the anatomy of a murder. That's what we're going to be talking about on today's episode. Getting deep into it. You know what I mean? We. Last episode, we went over, you know, kind of the life and times of Patrice Lumumba, the, the mm-hmm. birth, the childhood, the, the rise um, to, 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 to independence. Um, and that took us 35, 36 years, 36 yep. years. That yep. took us. We took it, took mm-hmm. the uh, um, um, a meteoric rise. Um, mm-hmm. And this will take us six months. <laughs> <laughs> six months it will yep. take us it's a, <laughs> for all of that work to become unraveled because just, unraveled really two months if you really want to be honest about it really 11 days 11 if you days wanna look, and then just it's all like trying to piece it back together he and actually make something <laughs> definitive but then it just never happens he yeah. actually had five good days five <laughs> that's not bad you know no, that's all. He had five <laughs> days where he was like, "I'm the president. I am the prime minister of the of the Congo. I'm mm-hmm. fucking killing it. I'm having a good time. I'm black. My skin shining. I look 27. I look 27. I look good. I look I'm good. 36. Man. I'm killing it. Yep. I'm the mm-hmm. president of the Congo. We got mm-hmm. a lot of mineral resources. It's gonna be that's a fun right. time. And then looking had, forward to the future. You know, five days of that. Five days. Five days of then... waking up, listening to the radio. Mm-hmm. Listening to listening to, listening to Prince. I don't. Prince wasn't out at the time, but I imagine he was no. just <laughs> listen to the Beatles demos. No, man, he probably would listen to out. No, yeah. what was out? It was 1960. <sighs> oh man, I, my my people, uh, Little Richard. Okay, he's doing the twist. I think that might be. He's just like yeah. listen to people. He's like he's just waking up. That's he got five days of that, uh-huh. <laughs> and then just. All downhill. From okay, there. so Henry, set the background for us real quick. <laughs> okay, so before we get into the unraveling yeah. and the murder and all that, I want to start before the independence of the Congo on April 18th of 1959. Patrice Lumumba goes to the Soviet embassy in the Ghanaian capital of Conakry and asks the Soviets if he can make a secret visit to the USSR. And so this is kind of the first opening move he has with Russia. And then I think shortly afterward, Russia will begin a like minor covert support of Patrice Lumumba. However, Patrice isn't like totally sold to the Soviets either because in late February 1960, Lumumba goes to meet with the U.S. ambassador in Brussels. And that ambassador gets the impression that Lumumba, he's kind of flexible. You know, although he might currently being supported economically by the USSR, he seems open to other offers. He's more of a nationalist than anything else. And if we can just make him a better offer, maybe he'll drift toward the West and maybe he'll become a capitalist. You know? Yeah, he doesn't really give it's, it's, if, if you read anything about Lamova, he doesn't really give a fuck at all. No, like, he's man. just a nationalist. He's just for Congo. He's yeah. just for the Congo. You know what I mean? It's uh, I always like the Guinea, Guinea, Guinean capital. Guinea is always that's a Sikau uh, Torre, Sikau Torre. He's yeah. like the one guy to say non to like being supported by France and like uh-huh. all the Francophile a- African companies, a- African countries, and then. Uh, he just becomes a dictator. <laughs> like, it happens, like it man. Happens, I'm, it happens I, so it's, often. <laughs> like, it's easy. Yeah, you just slide, it's slide like the right one on into it. Socialist you know? like country, <laughs> like it's just like oh, it kind of gets fucked up. <laughs> so then, picking up at our last episode, June thirtieth of nineteen sixty, this is officially Congolese independence, and you've got these elections yeah. in Belgium. Behind the scenes, they're hoping that all these pro-Belgium parties are going to prevail. Yeah. They're going to win all these elections. But they don't. The MNC, which is Lumumba's party, it takes 33 out of the 137 seats, which is not a majority, but it is a plurality. Yeah. So they have the most, not over 50 percent, but they have the most out of any, out of any, out of any one group. So, and if you don't know what a plurality is, the plurality being, look, if you if you if you fucked four of the girls in chemistry class, uh-huh. when there are 
12 girls uh-huh. in chemistry class uh-huh. and you fucked four girls john fucked three i don't know math i don't know why i'm trying to do you math it, 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 if you if you if you fucked four of the girls that's that's a plurality if you yeah. had fucked six if you had fucked seven that would be a majority out of the 12 right i don't know why we're acting like we've ever fucked before this, I, is, this is the version podcast. <laughs> yeah, this no, it's not. It's not. I, I got. I had negative game in negative, chemistry class. There were people sex. I wanted to fuck in chemistry class, but I just I you know, my, my shit wasn't together. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, I, I lost points that year. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't come near anybody. <laughs> just, just on myself. Okay, all right. I was trying to avoid <laughs> saying that. Let's move on. <laughs> so the final results of the election: Kasavubu is named president, and Lumumba becomes the Congo's first prime minister at age 35. Because they've got a like a dual system where you have a president and a prime minister. I'm not sure about the intricacies of the the Congolese political system. Forgive me, but that's the. That's the gist. Yeah, forgive us, Congo, for not knowing <laughs> for, for <laughs> the real. intricacies of your system. All right, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm sorry about it. <laughs> so upon taking office, Lumumba tells King Baudouin, or as we affectionately referred to him in the last episode, King Boudin, King Boudin. Of, of Belgium. Yeah. He says, we are no longer your monkeys. Uh-huh. So after independence... Congolese army, one of the first issues that Lumumba has to deal with is that they're upset. The Congolese army is upset over like low pay and lack of promotions because all of the top positions in the armies, all the officers are still are still Belgian, are still white. And so they start rebelling and mutinying and basically like paying it back to the Congolese. You know, there's like it's a it's an interesting time when like the the Belgian officer, uh, he like writes on the chalkboard like. Like, uh, just trying to get it through everybody's head. Like, this white dude, and like, just being like, but he writes before independence equals after independence. Just to say, these are the same exact fucking thing. And yeah. I want you to get it on to get through it. And this is the time when white people thought that they could talk to black people any, side, any type of way. This uh-huh. is before niggas started slapping the shit out of white people. <laughs> and <laughs> this is before that time. And this is the change in that moment. Because niggas start mutating, think, mutating yeah. or whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? Mutiny, yeah. yeah. It makes it makes me think that that whoever wrote that on the chalkboard, uh, a was super hammered when yeah. they came into work today, and b like knew some shit and was like drunk and confident enough to write that shit on the chalkboard. Like, listen, we got plans for the Congo, all yeah. right. So before independence, after independence, it's the same shit. We're still gonna fuck you guys up. Yeah, no, they're just <laughs> no. I just think that white is that white that the white man privilege arrogance. that shit. Yeah, yeah, that arrogance, like just being like, mm. hey. I don't give a fuck. I've always been in charge. I'm going to continue to be in charge. But he didn't even know shit. He was a bad officer. That's why he's in the Congo. Yeah, that's why (laughs) he's not stationed in fucking Singapore. Actually, they have nowhere. Belgium has Belgium has nowhere else. So (laughs) you got to you got to hang on to what you have. You know, you know. So the violence continues against the whites, and it's it's bad. Like, there are public humiliation yeah. and rapes. Basically, what white people did to the Congolese, the Congolese yeah. are now doing to the white people. And, it's, and so... It's like, it, and it's, yeah, they're doing that, and then, like, the white Belgians are like, yeah, we're going to get in our little shits because, you know what I mean, we're not going to... They don't want... they they It's their worst fears coming to... Coming to <laughs> yeah. life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But small amounts. It's not, it's not like, a, a widespread all over the country. But yeah. it's relatively small in the, in, the, in the context. Yeah. And so Lumumba, in order to quell the unrest, because he wants stability in his country, he puts his boys in the army, right? Yeah. He names a new army chief of staff, which is Victor Lundulu, and names this guy Joseph Mobutu yeah. as his deputy. And Mobutu is going to come up later on. Yeah. But just remember that he was once Lumumba's ally. It's always your boys. It's all. It's, it's always, always your boys. boys. Like, yeah, Henry's gonna betray me. I'm, I don't plan sure. on it. Man. No, I know you are. No, 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 I know you are. I know you are. I've seen it. I don't think. I think, being parano- I think I, you're being paranoid. I think you're being paranoid. Well, you, you knew that when you met me, so don't complain about it now. Okay, Let's move on. That's fair. Uh, <laughs> so now we're gonna break it down into month by month because. What goes on the rest of the year, next six months, very important. So July 10th of 1960, Belgians call in their troops to protect the leftover foreign community, which is illegal according to the uh, independence accords that they themselves signed. Very next day, Moise Shombe declares independence of Katanga from the Congo, and he invites the Belgians to send troops 
into their capital of Elizabethville. And Katanga is where all the minerals are at, or like most of the copper is at. Most of, I think copper, I cobalt, uranium, yeah. all of it. Two thirds of the Congo's like like money of like uh-huh. the 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 their like exports is in Katanga. In Katanga. <laughs> like, yep. And like, now this guy's just like, we're independent. By the way, Congo or Belgium, if you want to come back in inside of Katanga, we're now Katanga or we're now I think they're Zaire or something. No, like no, they 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 became Katanga. Like they're okay. just Katanga. Zaire comes later when Mobutu does his whole this whole thing, which is a funny rule. Just a funny rule cuz my man loved leopard hats. Uh-huh. And 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 like just opulence. <laughs> like, nice, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, who doesn't? You know? Yeah, so he so, like they just become their own little small country, and like yep. it's just super suspicious. Like just eleven days. It's only been eleven days. It's only been eleven days, <laughs> and you're already. I I want to say gerrymandering the state. Like, okay, you guys can have the Congo. We'll just draw out this this mineral rich section of the Congo. I don't think and it's gerrymandering. It decl- what would you call it? I call it theft, nigga. Like I call it okay. stolen. Fair enough. Stolen. <laughs> like, like fair, like, fair enough. Yo, we're just going to take the stuff that means the most to you. We're just going to carve that out. That's ours now. It's like if somebody came to your house and they were like, yo, we're going to take the TV. We're going to take uh-huh. the fucking couch. We're also going to take your bitch. You're uh-huh. female. You're woman. See? Right. See, mm-hmm. I'm toxic. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> but we will leave you. The iPad. Yeah, and like they, you can you can have. No, 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 it's no. like whoa, you you got all the big screens, you got all the good shit. What it's are you the doing? The broken iPad. It's the, the broken, broken the one that iPad. The, screen the old on. model. The yeah. iPad. You know that one. Not mm-hmm. even compatible yeah. with the rest of Apple anymore. They now you have to buy new chargers and yeah. shit. Like, nope, you don't have those anymore. Exactly. You, you got rid of them because you updated. But what are you gonna do? So the next day after Shombe declares independence, Lumumba and Kasavubu they ask for UN intervention, and they say that they want troops from neutral countries because they don't really trust the UN. They're like, we don't trust who you're going to send. You could send in Belgian troops with UN hats, and they're not going to do shit for us. So please, neutral countries only. And Lumumba says, if you don't do this by July 19th, a week from the announcement, he's going to go to the Soviet Union and the non-aligned movement for help. And instantly... This puts him on the CIA's radar. The the U.S. says that they are afraid of another Cuba because, you know, Castro's been in power for a little bit now yeah. and they're recognized, like, domino theory is effectively coming true and that's their that's their biggest fear. But it's kind of, it's, it's just kind of bullshit because, like, he went to you guys for help. Yeah. You won't help. No. You won't do anything, so he's obviously uh-uh. going to go to the other people and be like, To Yo. whoever's going to help him out. Like he, He's going to explore any options he can in order to stay in power and keep control of the nation. He, I mean, there was like the prior arrangement with the Soviet Union, but again, going back to that, that February 1960 meeting with yeah. the U.S. diplomat who's like, no, this, this is just a, this is an opportunist. This is, an amen- this is a politician, yeah, for fuck's sake. He's going to take the best offer. If you go back and you go back to listen to the last episode, part one, where we go over like his upbringing and kind of his, his like political and economic ideology, he is not a fucking socialist. He's no. not a communist. He's just he's really just a nationalist, and he's really like for maintaining a lot of the status quo with yeah. like a a just a little bit more of the money coming he, to the Congo. He That's seems eff- effectively like an elitist. Yeah, for the like, most part. You know? For the most part, yeah. Like so, it's it's just very interesting, and it, it, that they. I don't believe that the, the CIA couldn't see that. The CIA has niggas who read books. He, he like, do you know they had his book? Like, they had yeah. his book, so they. I don't understand how they didn't fucking just go, that's, yeah, he's probably just not that, the worst. That's, that's yeah, the I mean, weird thing is the, the preferred strategy is to, to kill him. And then it's like, well, why, why are they becoming more and more radical and, and drifting yeah. further and further toward the left after I tried to assassinate them? Like, you'd yeah. think they would get the message and... And, I, don't, and I, don't, what, I don't. I don't. I don't get it. It's cozy um, up to the guy who tried to sh- <laughs> tried to, put, to kill me, like to poison you know? my toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh yeah. Well, yep. That's a that's a thing. So the next day, July thirteenth, Soviet delegate to the UN Security Council is instructed by Khrushchev to vote in favor of UN intervention in the Congo. And Khrushchev is kind of telling Lumumba and Kasavubu, who's like, hey, we sympathize with you guys. We know what it's like to deal with these bullshit imperialists. But then Lumumba and Kasavubu learn that those UN forces are not to be deployed to 
Katanga. Yeah. And it's like, that's the separatist province that yeah. is causing all of these problems. Who has invited Belgian troops into it? Why the fuck aren't you sending them there? That's it's, what's going to solve the problem. It's a weird thing where, like, now reading it in in like the past, like reading it in the future, um, you're sitting here the whole time, like, nigga, they don't, they not your friend, and he they keeps going care, to him. <laughs> he keeps going. He keeps trusting these white people, and uh-huh. that's gonna get you. Like, he keeps trying to That'll go get to the killed. <laughs> and that's also because he's going to. He's also taking advice from from Kwame Nkrumah. Uh-huh. Uh, the le- the leader of uh of, of Ghana and yep. he he's telling him like yo go through the system, and the letters between uh, Patrice and Kwame at this time are hilarious because Patrice realizes that later he goes like yo they're not gonna help me and Kwame keeps no. telling him to go through the system and he's like what the fuck are you talking about like yeah. you know like, <laughs> like yeah well it's it's kind of the same thing with yeah. Jacobo Arbenz in Guatemala that Che tells him like arm up your people now the system's not going to help you yeah. But Jacobo decides, like, no, I don't want to cause a civil war. And then that's what's happened anyway. But yeah. I also get that, like, holding on to your legitimacy sometimes means exploring the channels that are already available or the established channels because then you seem more amenable. But this is not this is not the case. For Duh, you. Yeah, no, they, they you're you're worth a lot. This mm-hmm. is the, there's money on the line. Your nation's <laughs> worth a lot. And you're yeah. standing in the way yeah. of profit. And yeah. It's, you not, need it's never a safe place yeah. to be. No, 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 no. <laughs> so the same day, the UN Secretary General, this Swedish guy named Dag Hammarskjöld, with yeah. a J, right in the middle of his fucking name, yeah. where it doesn't doesn't, doesn't need belong. to be. Doesn't do anything doesn't need for to the be name. There. Doesn't, doesn't doesn't no point help us out. Just confuses people. <laughs> yeah, right? no point of that. <laughs> and his his family, they've got ties to the Belgian royal family yeah he organizes the un force of like four thousand to five thousand guys mostly from african countries yeah so then on july 22nd alan dulles says at a national security council meeting that lumumba is quote a castro or worse it is safe to go on the assumption that lumumba has been bought by the communists which and i feel like we already talked about this before he turned to the west and he turned to the UN. He's asking everybody, <laughs> like, He's, he just needs help. They, right? you, they, they have his books. They're not dumb. They understand no. who he really is. Yeah, they, there's a reason why they're ignoring it. There's a whole under. Yeah, Dulles is being uh, real shady. But what else have we learned to expect from from Alan Dulles? Because right? it's because and there's and we're gonna get to this later because even the slightest amount of dignity or respect or like mm-hmm. a, a fair agree- agreement mm-hmm. was not even, they didn't even want that on the table. No, <laughs> like no, even the it, slightest one all <laughs> like, or yeah. nothing. And yeah. We can, we can shop around for all if you're yeah. willing to give us nothing day after that on the 23rd, Lumumba flies to the U S because he wants to meet with top officials in Washington. And on the 29th, he's able to meet with secretary of state, Christian Herter and this guy, the deputy secretary of state C Douglas Dillon. Yeah. And he's going to come back in later and he even goes to the UN and he talks with Hammerskjold and the Soviet diplomat. And he's like, he's basically shopping around again, trying, trying to get peace for his country, no matter who's going to give it to him. Right. Yeah. And then there's, a, there's this other story that, like, while he's in D.C., the State Department's expert on the Congo, this guy Thomas Cassily, yeah. reports that Lumumba asked him to provide a female companion for him, uh, specifically a blonde white woman. Yeah. And this request is passed on to the CIA, who obliges him. Here's the thing about that. Makes one. it happen. I, I've read that. I've read that before. And, like... I can believe it, nigga. Like you your first like you've been to America a couple of times. Like, uh-huh. yeah, I mean, look, I'm the leader of a country uh-huh. now. I deserve I deserve to fuck sometimes. Mm-hmm. I, I get that. No, I get yep. that. It could also be white lies. It could, you know, it could also, also be, be those, slander. Could also That's be a those good white lies. <laughs> like, it came from the State Department. Yeah, no, they, and they But they, he also implicates the CIA. So yeah. maybe maybe it's, it's like it ah, could be it could, you know, you never know. Yeah. So August August first. We're in August now. 
USSR, they release a statement saying that the UN must order troops into Katanga. Like, stop fucking playing, yeah. get them in the problematic province, yeah. or we're going to step into the Congo. We're going to put troops in there. Yeah. And he, the, you know, Khrushchev claims that the aggressors, Katanga, were acting with the support of NATO. And effectively, he's like, the UN is just NATO on a global scale, right? Yeah. It's going to take time to move the UN, to make it a truly global body. I don't even know if you can argue it's a global body now, but they are kind of calling us out on our bullshit. But there's, there's a, anyway. No, because there's a thing about like, uh, like the, the UN and kind of all these global regulatory laws um, in that yeah. like – when you talk about who's been prosecuted by all the by like global prosecution, it's like mostly just people from Africa. Yeah, like it's and never it's, it's, it's never us. It's never even though we're yeah. doing the same shit that yeah. we're accusing them of doing. But well, you know, I mean, I, Congo, did, Congo did a lot of rapes and murder. Like not like, that you mean, like that true. whole like also Congo. True. It's, like, it's not unwarranted. Yeah. Second African uh, War, like all that shit in like the nineties, very fucked up shit. But yeah. we we have bombs from weddings. Yeah, <laughs> like, it, it like, killed some kids. Just, Plenty of skeletons some, yeah. in our closet. Bi- biological yeah. or uh, like biological warfare that we've seen in Cuba. We talked yeah. about that on the Castro episodes. Like it's all. Yeah, no, we got. There's bodies. plenty of prosecutable offenses. Nobody gets know? prosecuted here, baby. Uh, 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 we're, Torture we're, we're regime. Okay, you know. Torture regime. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so next day, Hammerskjold says that he's like, "All right, I hear you guys. UN forces are going to hit Katanga August 6th. You have my word." On the fifth. Khrushchev sends a letter to Lumumba, not Kasavubu. Yeah. So now they're they're playing favorites, and he says, "We have your back. We don't yeah. really give a fuck about Kasavubu. We're behind you. We know what it's like to deal with these bullshit imperialists. You know, if you need anything, let us know." So the next day, the sixth troops do not enter Katanga, and Nkrumah asks the Soviet Charge d'Affaires if Ghana could have Soviet support in the event of a broader war because they kind of sense where things where things are headed. And look, I I, I fuck with, with, with Kwame and uh, Kwame and Kruma, but like just asking is not uh, doing. You know what I mean? That's also true. There's yep. there's a there's a lot of times that the that the Ghanaian forces in in the Congo can act to help Patrice Lumumba out to kind of kind of throw their weight behind him. They don't, and it's and it's and it's it's supposed to mm. be that way because mm. we we yeah. we've been talking this Pan African uh, shit for about yeah. ten years now for a long time, <laughs> not ten years, but like but what, three or four years easy. now. Yeah, and and it's not when it's time to do it, it wasn't done. You can talk the talk, but can you walk the yeah. walk? So August 9th, USSR and Ceylon issue a joint resolution in the UN calling for a withdrawal of, from the Belgian forces in the Congo. You, your interests are too vested in, like, literally invested in the Congo. You're not an objective party. You need to get the fuck out. The UN needs to stabilize the situation. And like Khrushchev, he wants the UN to put the, put the rebellion down in Katanga, but he's also pretty skeptical that he's like, this is not going to happen. Not if Dog Hammarskjold has anything to say about it. Yeah. So on the 26th, Alan Dulles says to the CIA chief in the Congo, who's this guy, Lawrence Devlin, and they have their headquarters at Leopoldville, quote, that Lumumba's removal must be an urgent and prime objective. And he's doing so with Eisenhower's support. Eisenhower said on the 18th that they should try to kill both Lumumba and Castro. And so late in August... Khrushchev starts supplying Lumumba with foodstuffs and arms via Conakry because they're, they're gearing up for the war that they know is coming. And Devlin, like uh, the CIA, like station chief in Leopoldville or in uh-huh. the Congo, he yeah. like he has he specifically like he has in his like writings about it. He has like a he has like a small like Congolese person. I think it was a child or just a regular Congolese person at the airport counting the Soviet troops by five that are getting off the planes, anybody in the, in a Soviet uniform. And it, huh. it comes, it's like a thousand. It's like, it's a lot, but it's, it, yeah. you know what I mean? But it's not, there's not, they're not coming with a fucking army. You know what I mean? They're no, just advisors. No. I mean, a thousand is a lot relatively in yeah. that it's like four digits, but it's also not like the not, full weight that they could have sent. It's the least know? of the four digits. 
You know yeah, I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, like barely qualifies yeah. as, as 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 right over the threshold. I mean, and, and those people are like backing up all of the ministries of the Congo, so everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? But but it's also like not that Khrushchev was in any way silent on this issue. Yeah, like yeah. this is this is overlapping with the time that Khrushchev is in New York for the UN meeting, and primarily what he's talking about while he's yeah. there is like, yo, what's going on in the Congo right it's now is up. bullshit. It's like. Up. Dog Hammarskjöld, you should resign over yeah. this because you're 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 not you're not impartial uh, to what's going on. And you know who's you know who's silent on the most pettiest shit. You who's know who's real silent on the most pettiest shit. Uh, China. Is it Mao? Is yeah, it Mao? No, yeah, ooh, yeah. They, ooh, <laughs> Mao, Mao. Just silent because mm. they offered their help and you yep. went with Russia. Uh huh. You don't get China's help. China doesn't you're say not, anything. China sounds, says sounds, shit later once you're once yeah, you're killed. What but you like, said, he's, if he would have <laughs> taken our aid, sounds like China doesn't actually believe in the continual revolution <laughs> because if they man. did, they'd be able to turn aside their petty international beefs with other nations and support any country that was willing to aid itself against these fucking bullshit imperialists. Hey man, right? Don't you look? Don't talk shit on the chairman. Okay. All right. Don't. All right. <laughs> I'm ready for the hate mail, man. Fucking yeah. at me. I don't care. <laughs> Do it. He. You're about to. Get, you're about to get clapped by a Maoist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. If I gotta go some way, that's uh, that's fine. Early September of 1960. We're in September now. Hammarskjöld says to the U.S. He says that Lumumba must be broken. So on the fifth, both Kasavubu and Lumumba take to the radio channels and they be- they basically both fire each other which, I, I which really is like, like a really like like it's just jesus christ guys like, like. lumumba Lum- is like uh kasavubu is no longer president yeah. and kasavubu was like lumumba is no longer prime minister so it's like okay what are we who's right though you know it must have been so confusing for people just like just like sitting down like eating like Okay, now which one? I think I think they probably believed Lumumba because from what I hear, like everybody yeah, he loved was, Lumumba's voice. Yeah. They loved how he talked. He's a very, a very eloquent motherfucker. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I think maybe the constitutional precedent was with Casavubu because, like, Parliament votes on the ninth to annul the firing of Lumumba. So I guess like the presidential firing of the prime minister took precedent, but they've oh. got that, sh- that check in place to where parliament can be like, ah, we disagree with what the president did. Lumumba stays yeah. as prime minister. And so you've got this real awkward tension yeah. where they're both like still in the positions that they are both were in before after they tried to fire each other. So it's like, ugh. I'm just really confused that you now know the intricacies of the Congolese government. When just before we talked about not knowing the fucking intricacies of the Congolese. Do you know the intricacies of the Congolese government? Of the Congolese style of government? I don't, I don't, pret- I probably, I, I don't pretend to. There's probably more to it that I'm missing, okay. but it's always better. You know, you gotta, you gotta uh, under, undersell yourself at okay. all, at all, undersell, under promise, and then over deliver. Right? You sound like that's somebody how, who doesn't get you do it. who's not getting bald. That that's what you sound like. <laughs> so they, they do a cabinet reshuffling on the fourteenth. I don't know if it count uh, if it comes to much. Same day as that cabinet reshuffling, Joseph Desiree Mobutu, mm-hmm. which is Lumumba's former secretary and like the the deputy chief of staff, yeah. who Lumumba promoted, yeah. launches a coup against Lumumba and this is encouraged and backed by the CIA like he's in con- Mobutu is in contact with Lawrence Devlin yeah and he's like all right I don't care who fired who all politicians are invalid I am in control now but it, it, it reminds me of what we talked about before of the U.S. supporting an army backed coup yeah because they're the ones who just like they did in Indonesia like this this is this this is the M.O. It's the, it's the style. It's the style of. Uh, it's just the style of change. You know what I mean. Some mm-hmm. people got a certain style. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Some people like to wear bright colors. Some right. people like to wear Adidas. It's like little track yep. suits. Some people rock a fanny pack. Yeah. And, so, and some people like to stage coups in struggling third world countries. That's us. Right. By, That's by supporting and yeah. arming key people within the army. Right. And it's exploiting all, exploiting. Uh, Tensions and yeah, all you that know what I mean. Shit. It's always yeah. your boy. It's always your it's boy. Always, it, it, it's it, always it, your it, friend. It's never. Yep. It's and we, you can go back. You we can we can talk about Thomas Tankara uh-huh. and Blaze Campare, which we have an episode on Thomas Tankara. If you haven't, if you if you don't know, if you haven't watched yep. that one, like, look, it's always your boy. <laughs> it's never somebody you don't know. 
Yep. You know what I mean? It's never somebody you don't know. It's you. You, you got to be careful, man. Yeah, you know I mean, up. that's why it's I have a up. gun on Henry at all times. <laughs> all times. There's so you can't see him in the shot right now, but there's somebody standing by right around the corner who's uh, who's. I shouldn't have outed them because now I don't know what they're. Yeah, gonna man, do. This, this is good doing the podcast with you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> so the UN. They shut down the Congolese airports and Leopoldville's radio station. Yeah. So Lumumba cannot contact the Soviets and he cannot receive any Soviet aid. But they still got like, you know, Conakry is kind of acting as that sub satellite that is willing to act as an intermediary between the Congo and the USSR. And there's a there's a in this I think it said during this time, there's a there's a there's a moment where Lumumba, with his with, had with some guys, goes to the radio station or goes to one of the radio stations, and fucking it is like stopped by Ghanaian troops under the UN banner, mm-hmm. yep. and he's and he's sitting there like, yo, yeah, yeah, the Pan African shit, the yeah. Pan what, Pan African. What about shit. all that that what we all claim that, to believe? All about huh? all that Pan African shit, and they're just like they disarm some of his guys, and he's, he's sitting there like, and it's like, and at the time. Kwame and Kuma still sending them letters like you got to go through the process. It's like, bro, you're supposed to be helping me the fuck out, and mm-hmm. you're fucking and you didn't do anything. You're bailing on me. You're bailing right on now. me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's 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 never. It's always your friends, and it's always us, or whoever you want to belong to. It's always it's always us. It's fucked up. Yeah. So the 16th of September, Lumumba he recognizes shit is fucked. He's not safe. He delivers himself into UN custody and protection in Leopoldville. And he's like guarded in a mansion. But it's it's pretty scary because yeah. there are there are two rings. You have the inner ring of UN troops yeah. to prevent his arrest, and then an outer ring of Mobutu's soldiers to prevent his escape. Because yeah. he's still he's a very eloquent speaker. He's the populist leader. People still love him. Yeah. He can still no, I don't even want to say do damage. He can still rebuild the state, and that's what they're afraid of. Oh, for sure. He just had to. So he just has to get to Stanleyville because that's where mm-hmm. his like component is. Yeah. Like the the yep. MNCL, the MNC Lumumba. The that's where all his guys are. Yep. And also, I would like to state because I, I don't think we mentioned this at the top. There's Katanga. There's uh-huh. there's there's this Mobutu thing is going on. This Mobutu kind of takes over. There's also in Kasai. There's Alba Kalonji has like ha- has his own like little separate separate part. There's like <laughs> that's that's like literally called like the the mineral the mineral company of of Kasai. It's like not even a front. Okay. So like there's this shit is breaking <laughs> apart yeah. in a fucking crazy does way. It, it's being snatched it, up and backed by like just money resources. Yeah, Does, doesn't M- Mugabe come in late? Roger, Robert Mugabe. Isn't oh, that's he Mugabe, but around? that's gonna Mugabe? be that's gonna be that's gonna be in, in I'm pretty sure after, Uganda. After yeah. this, yeah, that's gonna be. I'm pretty sure that's in Uganda. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So on the the 26th of September, the CIA guy Dr. Sidney Gottlieb, who was a, a prior affiliated with the CIA by working on the MK Ultra experiments, nasty guy. I guess a good good enough scientist. Yeah. He arrives in the Congo with poisons, one of which he wants to he uh they want to kill Lumumba by poisoning his his toothpaste. And this is a, if, if when you hear like Devlin when you read like Devlin write about this, the CIA chief in the Congo, he's like writes about it talking about like, yeah, I got directives to mm. go to a cafe and meet yep. a guy named Joe from Paris. And yep. then I meet that guy named Joe from Paris. And mm-hmm. he gets in the car and fucking uh, he j- he just shows me all these poisons that he has, mm-hmm. and it's like, dude, you're the CIA. Nobody cares. Like, like it's the CIA is a, they're a bunch of clowns. <laughs> I just want to tell you, and I think me and Henry are strong on this because we've been like we've been reading about all the shit. We've been they, in it. They've yeah. been pulling like, <laughs> like, like uh, I think if you so the movie Argo. With yep. uh, I know I think we referenced this before. Movie yep. Argo, where they fucking say, "Hey, we're gonna do a sci-fi film to get yep. these goddamn Canadians, to get these hostages yeah, out add, of and Iran, and these, and these potential like, hostages, and get out. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a sci-fi film." And you're like, "Oh man, that's cool. It's like a fringe thing that the CIA does. That they have like all these. Th- that's cool. That that's like a fringe. That's not what they normally. No, that's what they normally do. They're just yeah. they're crazy. <laughs> they're just making shit up, man. They shit just up. do whatever. What do you what do you want to do? You guys want to be? You guys want to 
to be movie makers. Yeah. You want to uh, overdose. You want to see if we can overdose somebody with LSD. You want to fucking p- poison and toothpaste, man. It's the fucking chocolate factory of bullshit over here at, at CIA HQ, yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> and you think of this. What do you think that, that toothpaste was, was like? Where it's like four, four out of five, <laughs> four out of five des- dentists recommend a Colgate. I don't know where I'm going with this. Yeah, no, sometimes <laughs> thought, it doesn't work, and that's I fine, baby boy. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I, did, I, I didn't know where you were going, and I wanted to help you, but I was like, I was like, he's going somewhere strong, uh, or he's not going to go? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Four out of five. Nah, Doctors, nah, just dentists, get back, just get back to the Congo. toothpaste. Just get back to the uh, Congo. want to get killed. <laughs> they give it to this CIA-hired mercenary <laughs> named QJ-WIN. Yeah. And it's, it's not entirely known who this guy was like i i searched his name and apparently he might have also had something to do with the jfk assassination yeah just q j dash w i n is who they give it to and he's like in the congo as well but he's like a repeat q j win Q J Win sounds like a sounds like a a, a cool Asian kid that has Jordan. Yeah, man, I'm sure there's there's Jordan there's a chain. That's that's like a League of Legends username right yeah, there. No, no, some no, dude who sure. knows his history, you know. Q J Win, like yeah. he he fucking wins. He comes, he kicks ass. He he mains Garen, but you he know, murders people and he leaves. Yeah, <laughs> like, he, that's what he does, man. Yeah. That's his mo. So in October of 1960, Lumumba things are kind of stagnant for a little bit. He's at the mansion and he says at a dinner event that he could have made millions if he had been willing to, quote, mortgage the national sovereignty. That's true. I mean, look, man, they didn't really give a fuck who it was. No. If he had just, Somebody's going to make this money, you know? If he, if he had if, just been, like, less on, like, the independence talk and more, like, like mm-hmm. kind of just been like, yeah, man, but we're still willing to do everything you want us to do, he could have yep. made millions. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of lot of African, lot of African leaders did. I mean, oh, we're yeah. independent, mm-hmm. but France still decides how we spend uh, our yeah. spend our money. Our money. <laughs> yeah. they, they all went for the carrot, and Lumumba got the stick. Yeah. So early November of 1960, the UN they recognize a diplomat to the United Nations appointed by Kasavubu. So this effectively means like Lumumba, he's no longer recognized by the UN. Yeah. It isn't until the 27th of November that Lumumba escapes from the mansion during a thunderstorm, I think in like a diplomat or an ambassador's car, yeah. and he starts heading towards Stanleyville to gather his forces because that's where his largest base of support is. And he, interestingly... Oh, no, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Interest, the UN forces, as he's escaping, they're like starting to go on the hunt, but yeah. they're ordered to stand down. By who? Mm. Who really knows? You know, the West is the large, like, but which, who in the West, you know, are they yeah. ordered to stand by, by Belgium or Doc Hammarskjöld or the U.S. or all of them together? But the point is that they're ordered like, no, do not pursue, right? It, it, it's this weird thing where like, even like he's fleeing with his son and son and his, and his wife and yep. he's like fleeing people who are trying to kidnap and probably going to kill him. Yep. And he's trying to, he's just like stopping in villages, giving speeches. Yes. Like a jackass. Yeah. You, your life is on the line, bro. Uh huh. Dip. Like, <laughs> you, you got to keep gotta going, dip, man. You got to keep moving. You got to you you move. Know? You yep. got to go. You got to go. And it's, and it's like, it's weird because I, I, I know he had to understand the severity of what was going on around him, but sometimes yeah. it doesn't, it makes it, I don't feel like he did. Because even sometimes, before, yep. before this, when he was in power, like when he was in power, and like he should have been, just shooting. This they should have went into into Katanga. Yeah, just they armed up. Civil War. Go. Another Vietnam. Let's go. do it. Go. Fuck it. Go. You want to play this game? Yeah. Let's do it. From the jump, he should be like, go, go, go. He's late in that struggle. Still like giving speeches, trying to uh-huh. get popular support, and like Amen. bringing, 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 uh, bringing a uh, like mixed couples on stage and being like, we don't hate white people. Uh-huh. That 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 are not racist and saying stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. And it's like, well, yeah, no, that's cool. But like, also that's you good. guys are shooting, dog. But you they're gonna really try to kill shooting. you, man. Yeah, hey, really sometimes gonna, sometimes really you gotta get that that high five in. You know, sometimes you need that high five. You got that stage time available. You're gonna take it. No, you know? no, I can do. I can do a high five <laughs> right now. I can I can go do stand up. I can go ask to be on the show. But guess what? There's death outside. There's and death I'm not, outside and my doors. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not an idiot. Goddamn. 
So you've got kind of like this, it's a manhunt. It's on. You've got CIA forces out there and also Mobutu's forces out yeah. there just looking like we need to kill Lumumba. We need to catch him and we need to kill them. Right. So December 1st of 1960, Lumumba's on the run. He has to cross a river, and they've only got one canoe that they're able to cross in, yeah. so they're going to have to take turns. And Lumumba's, Lumumba's going out there, but then he realizes that like his wife and child has been captured by the forces of this guy, Gilbert Pongo, who's yeah. the security chief for Mobutu. Yeah. And so Lumumba, once he hears that his wife and kid is, have been captured, he turns around for them. Yeah. And right when he gets there, he starts like working his verbal magic right and he's like winning men over and inspiring them to rebel against Mobutu that he is the rightful leader of the Congo and they're about to fucking help him out they're about to turn to like to turn coat basically but then Pongo shows up who's the yeah. captain and is like no 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 we're not fucking doing that in, take uh, his ass into custody in uh in, in Lumumba uh Africa's lost leader by Leo Zelig um it's a uh, <laughs> apparently like they the, they're like they were getting convinced and then the commander was like they were gonna let him go and then like the commander who was I think they were either waiting for somebody the yeah. commander like turns around and is just like all right I got some joints guys <laughs> and like they smoke <laughs> weed and then like <laughs> and then really? the other people show up <laughs> yeah that's like in the book like it's like yo like they were fucking just like man this guy is making the points and then they like they're like commanders like. <laughs> Hey guys, I got some fucking reefer, and then they start chilling, and smoking weed, and then the other guys show up. <laughs> like, 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 I don't know just if that's walk. true, but that's hilarious. That's, true. that's pretty. That's yeah. That's pretty good. You, you just gotta, you know, what 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 better way to to sit around and listen to a lecture about the evils of of neo colonialism? Yeah. I feel like I've had that conversation before, just smoking weed in my drug dealer's apartment, and talking about how fucked up. The world is and it's fucked up out here, dog. <laughs> fucked up out here, dog. That's pretty. Are you it's always buy how it more? happens. Yeah. Are you gonna buy <laughs> more? You need. Uh, yeah. It's a sales technique. You know, it's they convince sales... you to no, be afraid of the world so they can sell you more, more, uh, more remedy. More. Also, they just want friends, and it's hilarious. That's also true. <laughs> I, I've never, you know, drug dealers have lots of lots of friends. Yeah, quote unquote. It's December second. Of 1960, he's captured. He's taken into Mobutu's custody. He's imprisoned momentarily in Thiesville. Yeah. On the 12th of 1960, Antoine Gizenga, who's Lumumba's former deputy prime minister, yeah. he declares the Free Republic of the Congo, which yeah. is based in Stanleyville, and they begin gaining territory throughout the province, which scares the shit out of Mobutu. And just some, you know, your bros might betray you. Yeah. But they might also be there for you. You know, it all depends on who's in your orbit. Because here's another one of Lumumba's guys who like yeah. was in his government as well, who was like, no, I need to I need to stand up for Lumumba's vision for the Congo yeah. in Stanleyville, in his base of support. And he's one of the real ones. Gazenga, you know? No, no, I no, I completely agree. Like there's uh no, the the Gazenga, um, there's a there's a lot of Mumbumba, uh, like there's a lot of Lumumba like officials that become like Lumumbaists. That becomes like a a title or a party being a Lumumbaist after Lumumba's death. Mm. That that's a that's a that's a real part of the Congo. But they with Mobutu specifically, one of his close, one of his good closest people who yeah. fucking there's like when it's been in Lumumba's beer selling days. Fucking mm. Mobutu's like riding a bike with like Lumumba. They're like riding a motorcycle, one motorcycle, just together, like through the streets of like Leopoldville. It, okay. it was his That's boy. That's fucked up. That's <laughs> fucked up. That's <laughs> fucked up then. Yeah, no, it's but always your boy. The the Free Republic of the Congo, it's recognized by I think most of the Eastern Bloc. Like a large part of the the entire Eastern Bloc, like all the Eastern European countries now, yeah. the USSR, China and Cuba are all like, Yes, Free Republic of the Congo is the only legitimate government in the Congo right now. If you support any of the other ones, yeah. you're fucking wrong, right? Yeah. So wrapping up or getting getting close to it, mid January nineteen sixty one Lumumba starts another mutiny nearly among Mobutu's soldiers and escapes briefly before he's like re imprisoned. And yeah. then at this point, it's like, you're too influential. You're 
too you're going to create too much too many problems for us so on january 17th of 1961 under the advice of lawrence devlin the cia guy mobutu gives lumumba up on a belgian chartered plane and flies him to katanga into the the open the open jaws of okay. shombe yeah. because they know shombe is going to kill Lumumba and they do. I think they just it's it's so people say who who did it? Well we all we know who did it. Like we it know. was the Belgians. Um yeah. they were they <laughs> they delivered him to the Katanga for like to Katanga. Um gets out the airport. I think they like they put him in jail for a little bit and then he yeah. took it out of that he took it out of that jail along with uh with two two uh Impolu Impolu and Okitu it's uh there's like two kind of also Lumumba's people um and they're taken into the wilderness shot by firing squad into like a ditch mm-hmm. then their body is hacked into pieces um the, the heads decapitated heads decapitated body hacked into pieces and then they are dissolved in sulfuric acid by Belgian officers particularly Gerard Soote who who like this is one of the people the person who like dissolves their body and I think then after that they like burn them a little bit then they crush their bones and scatter it into the countryside and Gerard Sorote is a particularly chilling fucking horrible animal because he still has like I think it was in the nineties or two thousands he still had Lumumba's like teeth on or so he was claiming to have Lumumba's teeth on his mantle in fucking Belgium so yeah that's, fucked <laughs> like that's fucked. Yeah. That's Fucked somebody's up. granddad, dude. So, don't, so up. that's why I yeah. don't trust your granddads, bro. No, that's why no. I don't trust white granddads. I mean, just if you're a, <laughs> like, if you're like, a human being, you yeah. do not put another human being's teeth on a fucking on your mantle, mantle on ne- next to next to a picture of your own yeah family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, like what are what are you what are you doing yeah. really though? Maniac <laughs> shit, maniac yeah. shit. He was like just a just up. Belgian yeah. police officer. So don't toss me about the cops. <laughs> like, mm, a cab, man. Yeah. A cab. <laughs> so we we've got we've got as far as proving our case, yeah. law and order, the Congo. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, bow, wow. dun, you've dun, dun, got dun, dun. you've got <laughs> means. Yeah. You've got opportunity, but what about motive? Yeah. And so now we're gonna talk about the Western bi- business interests. In the Congo, yeah. Real quick, first of all, tying it all together, you've got C. Douglas Dillon, the Deputy Secretary of State we mentioned from before. His family's investment bank, which is Dillon Reed and Co., handled the Congo's bond issues. I think, in particular, they like gave loans to some construction firm within yeah. the Congo, and they're partnered with the Rockefellers. Uh-huh. There's this guy, John Vandermeersch who's the son of the former Belgian foreign minister. He specializes in Congolese affairs with Dylan Reed and co. So you've got this high up member of like the Belgian government who also works for an American corporation. Yeah. You've got Morgan guarantee trust as they were known at the time. You might know them better now as JP Morgan yeah. gave two. $20 million loans to the Belgian Congo. Yeah. And they, they brag on their website that they are the first U.S. bank to have an edifice open in Brussels as early as 1919. So they're not even trying to hide it, really. Yeah. General Motors had its sole distributorship in the Congo in none other than Katanga, yeah. the separatist province. And then Sullivan and Cromwell, who's this this New York law firm that the Dulles brothers used to work for, one of their clients is the American Metal Company, a.k.a. Amax, which is this big mining behemoth with interests in the Congo. And Alan Dulles, he's close to Harold Hotschild, who's the chairman of Amax. And he's also the, like, the U.S. ambassador to Belgium was this guy, William Burden, who is also a company director of AMAX, and and AMAX contributed heavily to um, to Dwight Eisenhower's reelection hmm. in 1956. Interestingly enough, like Adam Adam Hotschild's son is this guy Adam 
Hotschild. Yeah. I'm sorry, Harold Hotschild's son is Adam Hotschild, who would go on to write this book called King Leopold's Ghost, oh. which is all about the Congo in yeah. like the like the early 20th yeah, century the and all the time. fucked up shit that yeah. happened, almost like rebelling against his father, but also yeah. not entirely because it's based in historical fact. Yeah. As far as Belgium is concerned, or Belgium is concerned, um, Brussels and the Belgian government, they want to protect the Union Minière de Hot Katanga or yeah. UMHK, which is like a mineral monopoly that they had in the Congo. Yeah. Hammerskjold, the UN and I would, li- I would like to say, for, for the Union Minere, uh, uh Hot de Ka- of the Congo, $4 million a year. <laughs> uh-huh. $4 billion Damn. being made a year. And I'm pretty sure that's in like 1960 money. And I think it's like $30 yeah. million a year today. Like it's it's for the for for Belgium and, you, and you're you're about to lose your only colony like yeah, hell no, no. no you're not you're not you got no, the, no no in 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 Belgium they're having fucking uh, they're having they're having their own like people are striking in Belgium like they're having their own labor struggles mm. there's a lot of shit okay. going on in Belgium itself also at this time huh and then t- tying it into Hammerskjold he's it, like Hammerskjold and his family is associated with the Liberian American Swedish Minerals Company, or LAMCO. And this is like a conglomerate of mining companies who varyingly have interests in the Congo, right? So you've got Sweden, you've got Belgium, and you've got America, who all want this same guy dead. Yeah. Lastly, you've got Devlin, Lawrence Devlin himself, almost like the most incriminating, he would leave the CIA in 1974 to pursue a career in the diamond industry in none other than the Congo. Because his, his contact is this guy, Maurice Templesman, who is, is, is chairman of this company, Lazare Kaplan International. And Templesman, is a, is, he was born in Belgium yeah. and then immigrated to America. Yeah, and as as far back as like the 1950s, advocated that the U.S. buy up diamonds and had contact with like JFK and and later administration. So it's not just Ike; it's it's a both sides thing. But yeah. like, as far as assassinating Lumumba, you've got the inauguration of JFK scheduled for January 20th. Yeah, and you don't know what his policy toward the CIA is going to be once he learns about all this fucked up shit. Yeah, you've got to act fast. Yeah. You know? it's a uh... It's a lot. It's a lot. Everybody wanted him dead. And, Everybody wanted him dead. And, yeah. and also to top that off, we got to reiterate, which we talked about, I think we, I think we touched on in the first episode a little bit. The, all of the, a lot of the uranium mm-hmm. <laughs> that the American, that the Americans like build their bombs with the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima, Hiroshima in Nagasaki yeah. came, the uranium come, came from the Congo. Yeah. They the, the the Americans have a relationship where they're buying the uranium from the Belgians. I don't need if I'm an, if I'm the CIA or Americans, I don't need a guy who now ha- can think for himself. Not at all. <laughs> to be Not to, at when it comes all. to the uranium. So they yeah. so so it was on top of all those business interests. Yeah. Uranium. Then there's a uranium game being played with nuclear and weapons. There's this whole, during like, the Cold War. Yeah. During yeah. the the height of the height of the Cold War. Yeah, and the the missile gap that's being yeah. spun in yeah. like the the early the late 1950s, early 1960s of yeah. like we don't have enough bombs. Russia has more bombs than us, which is is questionable. But yeah. if enough of the public believes that, and and the government starts to believe that, that like all right, where can we get more uranium? Oh, it's in the Congo. Yeah. Oh, we have a whole bunch of other interests in the Congo. Oh, there's this guy standing in the way of our diamonds yeah. and our copper yeah. and our cobalt oh, yeah. and our uranium. Yeah. And it and it, it it's just it's just fucked cuz it's weird cuz you want to think that he knew that. You want to think he didn't. Like it just was like it feels like when you listen all when you list all these and then you list the uranium on top of it, it just feels like he had no chance. Like they were, they, no. were, they were never gonna let fuck, anybody who had any no. mind of, no, their, no, no. of his own. Yeah, <laughs> like D- dude, they were looking for a stooge. Yeah, and in- independence was—I don't want to say nominal, but it—it it was like there was the understanding that all right. But let, you said in the first episode that we'll grant you independence in order to catch you 
no, off that, guard. That was the point of them of them granting all the independent. You gotta think about this in terms of lineal, in terms of like the global kind of not global, but about world events or global events. You have what happens in Vietnam in night from nineteen forty six um, throughout the fifties in, in the fifties with Dinh Bien Phu in the yep. Vietnam and the fucking Indochina and the and, and the French. They get their they get their ass kicked. They get their yeah. ass kicked. And then fucking you have what happened at the Suez Canal. I think that's in 58? 56. 56? I think. With, yeah, uh, 50, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, with the British where they get they get, they get get defeated. So they're starting mm. to think militarily probably not. Do we want to keep doing having these military, these conflicts? So what's the best way to, we can, they, if they want independence, give them independence. But we'll set up the business yeah. arrangements where mm-hmm. they benefit us and we'll also catch them off guard because right now there's a lot of them are colonialist. They're still yeah. for this. They've set up that evolved culture where like they're, everybody still is kind of fucking with colonialism where, they're, where the, the upper class is benefiting from it. And they're like, yeah. if we can catch those people and give, and give put like sending those predatory still colonial arrangements with an independent country. We don't have mm-hmm. to spend the money on governing and we're going to develop the development, all exploitative development. development contracts. Yeah. Yeah. If we can do all that, it'd be great. And that's what, that's what they did. Most of the country. And then, and then, uh, you know I mean? I, I feel like the Congo just was the, like the late was, was one of the later ones. And that's where it turned out. Cause France did it all. You know what I mean? France did theirs, yeah. I think in 58, and they only had one country, which was uh, Guinea, and Seiko yeah. Torres ain't none. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I'm, I, I'd rather live free, or and then be rich in slavery. But he, mm. you know, then he became a dictator. So <laughs> like, yeah, they're just trying to catch you. Mm-hmm. It's like set up, set it up right, and they and and uh, they did for the most part. They, a lot of they, a lot yeah. of places. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. And there's no happy ending for this one. Uh, do you There's want no having because the Congo's still fucked. Yeah, you know I mean, it's still it, fucked. It's been fucked. There's like, I it, it that's in the you and you look at the way it currently is now. Like, how is the Congo not rich when like every yeah. cell phone in the world at the touchscreen that to make that touchscreen work, the mineral I'm pretty sure it's, it, it has to come from it's the Congo. A, yeah, yeah. Like, and how what <laughs> every touchscreen? Anything? Why isn't that, why isn't in that the world? Money? inside of the yeah, congo it's got money all not? of these resources yet if, the profit from those resources is lining the pop prof, uh, the pockets of the west and and from my understanding the way you get that mineral about the cell phone about, that makes the touch screens you get that particularly in the eastern congo where mm-hmm. there is still like those those ethnic conflicts going on and mm-hmm. if you as we you know read and read about Lumumba, they, you know, that's something they particularly were trying to, to exploit with exploit, the, eth- yeah. the ethnic conflicts. Yeah. Pit them against each other. That yeah. way they can't pit or uh, join themselves against us. Yeah, man. It's a, it's a, it's a sad story and it, it feel like, yeah. it, um, do you want me to read the, uh, the, uh, yes. the, the, yeah, the, that'd be cool. And it's, it's, it's kind of a sad thing because we, we, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't, we don't get to see that vision come true let me let me flip to it real quick not yet i I like to hold on to hope i like to think that still there's there's some way it could happen but it would take more dynamic leaders like lumumba yeah so when we you know we're gonna read the letter that lumumba um wrote um to his family uh when he was imprisoned from my understanding right before he was killed um and I'm going to jump to the middle because it's a pretty long letter um, and middle to the end. Um, so we are, we are not alone. This is from Lumumba, written by Lumumba. Uh, we are not alone. Africa, Asia, and free and liberated people from every corner of the world will always be found at the side of the Congolese. They will not abandon the fight until the day comes when there are no more colonizers and mercenaries in our country. To my children... Um, who I, who I leave and whom perhaps I will see no more. I wish that they be told that the future of the Congo is beautiful and that it expects from them as it expects from each Congolese to accomplish the sacred task of, of reconstruction of our independence and our sovereignty. For without dignity, there's no liberty. Without justice, there's no dignity. And without independence, there are no free men. Uh, no brutality, mistreatment, or torture has ever forced me to ask for grace. 
for I prefer to die with my head high, with my head high, my faith steadfast, and my confidence profound in the destiny of my country, rather than to live in submission and scorn uh, of sacred principles. History will one day have its say, but it will not be the history that Brussels, Paris, Washington, or the United Nations will teach, but that. Yep. which uh, they will teach in the countries emancipated from co- co- colonialism and its puppets. Africa will write its own history, and it will be to the north and to the south of the Sahara a history of glory and dignity. And it continues, um, uh, Do not weep for me, dear companion. Uh, I know that my country, which suffers so much, will know how to defend its, independ- its independence and its liberty. Long live the Congo, long live Africa, Patrice. So, yeah. Written to it, written to his family, written to his written to his uh his wife, but really supposed to be well, yeah. a letter to all of the Congo with it's the understanding it's going to be it's yeah. going to be spread farther than yeah. farther than him. Yeah. I don't I don't think we need to say anything. No, anything we can't else. say anything else. That's that's a, that's a great way to end it. Uh thank you guys. Uh, for listening, we hope you learned a lot. Um, uh, next week, next week, next, what do we got? Next week, we're looking at a quote unquote non aligned nation. We're going to okay. be looking at India through the eyes of Indira Gandhi. Okay. And uh, <laughs> more fucked up shit. <laughs> more, more fucked up shit. That's kind of yep. the pattern on this thing. Yep. Kind of, this one rocks. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. <laughs> uh, all right, Henry. What's your social media? You can find me, at, or you can find the podcast first yeah. at Hard Fried History on Facebook, mm-hmm. Hard Fried History on Instagram, HFH Podcast on Twitter. You can find me at Henry E Price on Instagram and then just Henry Price on Facebook. I did a corporate training video not that long ago. Okay. That's going to be uh I don't know why you're telling people unless they work for that corporation. That's uh, you sure. know, get the views. I don't know. I don't fucking I don't care. <laughs> okay. <man. laughs> get the get the attention. <laughs> and you can find me uh Joshua B Stokes on Twitter and Joshua B Stokes on Instagram and Joshua Stokes on Facebook. Guys, thank you for listening. We will see you next time. Mm-hmm. Stay safe out there. We love yep. you. Um, and that's been an episode of Law and Order Hard Fight History. No, it's not fun to end it after he died like that. Sorry, no. guys. No. <laughs> it's, not, it's not fun because that's not fun anymore. All right, guys. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Take care.